We're talking Miami Hurricanes football on the Our Lads Football Network, the Our Lads Football YouTube channel. And there's a lot to talk about. Gary Furman with us, canesport.com. How's it going, Gary? It's going. I'm not going to sit here and start yelling. The U is back yet, but it's going. <laughs> uh, they, uh, they squeezed out a few victories that every good team has to be able to do during the course of a season. And uh, now it looks like they're picking up some steam. I was very impressed by what I saw, certainly on the offensive side of the football at Louisville this past weekend. Uh, Cam Ward in the passing game has been there since day one, the best passing game in the country. The thing that really impressed me, Greg, this past week was the way they mauled Louisville uh, with the run game. And they, this is uh, working towards being a multifaceted offense that can run the ball and throw the ball. To me, that will bode well when they get to the postseason. Now they just have to get the defense playing a little bit better. Yeah, the bye seemed like or one of the off weeks sure came at the right time. Uh, not sure how Miami would have been able to keep hanging on after those back-to-back -back comebacks, but it, it that's what you need. You, you need, like you said, you got to have those games where you just fight through and, and Hey, you, you just found a way. And then you also have to have some luck, sometimes scheduling luck, sometimes other luck, but for the most part, Miami's earned any luck that they've had. They've been very, very, uh, aggressive and confident. It's not the old Miami hurricanes players that we're, uh, used to seeing, you know, there's a lot of doubters down in Miami. They're just waiting for the next, uh, you know, bad game and disappointing game. And maybe they thought that was the Virginia tech game. And then all of a sudden they came back and then, Oh yeah, you see, it's the California game. Oh no, wait a second. We won that one too. So I don't know. I think this might be the year. Well, we'll see. I mean, it is a long way to go before we start calling this the year, but it's certainly <laughs> moving in the right direction. And, uh, you know, coming into the season, they knew what the weaknesses on the team were. The, the defensive backfield and pass coverage was going to be an issue. And it has played out that way when they've played teams that can throw the ball a little bit. And uh, Cal, I thought, did a phenomenal job. I don't understand how that team keeps losing close games. Yeah. But Cal did a phenomenal job of game planning for Miami and uh, had about – I'd say three to four pass plays in their back pocket that they had schemed up that they felt pretty good about. And they were able to hit on them and, and get easy scores. And, and, and that's why that game was close. I mean, if, if you take those three, four plays out where they picked up plus 50 yards on each individual play, um, Miami beat that team pretty damn well. And, and uh, so there, there were signs that this team is on the cusp of really pulling it all together. Uh, and then against Louisville, you know, listen, uh, Jeff Brom is a great uh, play yep. caller. It's a very high octane offense with good skill players. And uh, they were able to hang with Miami for a while. But uh, game came to the fourth quarter and Miami opened up that two touchdown lead. And uh, I thought it was pretty impressive. Yeah. And, and uh, look, um after talking to you and, and doing my research before the season began, uh, and I felt pretty strong. And I, I and again, we've talked about crystal ball. We know that, uh, or at least, you know, we've talked about, you, you have to have patience with a guy that is a known recruiting, you know, God, which is basically where crystal ball has been in college football for some time now. And now you can see the, 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 the team that he's, finally started to develop here with the recruiting and the transfers and it's all coming together. Um, and so I actually picked Miami to win, uh, to, uh, to play an AC championship game this year. Uh, I was pretty confident that Crystal Ball, this was his time. Uh, we'll see, like you said, it's early still, there's still a, a handful of games left, but I guess what I meant by, you know, whether Miami's back or not, it's really about not necessarily winning a championship. It's about maybe, you know, getting to the playoffs for sure, uh, winning a game or two and showing that, hey, you know, we're as good as any team in the country. We just have to uh, make a play here or there. And I think the thing, though, that is really important about winning a championship, if it's possible this year, is that Cam Ward's the quarterback. And uh, you want to take advantage of that if you can. Yeah, I mean, he's an eraser. Uh, the kid's unbelievable. We We had no idea how good of a player he was when he was at Washington State because he just didn't have the supporting cast to go with it. And uh, and who watched Cougars football, you know, at 1 o'clock in the morning? 
Correct. Yeah. So, you know, this kid just came in here and from day one has just made this his team and um, was has been a leader and is just willing these guys to be great. And, uh, you know, without him, I think there may be an eight, nine win team this year. You sure. know, I mean, with him, they have a chance to go undefeated and he's that good. He absolutely should be at the top of the Heisman race like he is. Uh, and uh, you just can't say enough positive things about Cam Ward, who is getting everything out of this year that he needed to get and was looking to get by coming to Miami, and that's to position himself for April and the NFL draft. Yeah, let's talk about, uh, because some of the players we're going to be talking about here definitely uh, are going to, Ward being one of them, a part of the draft process. Uh, let's, let's stay on offense. And, uh, you know, you're talking about that running game. Now, one thing that I was really impressed with the running game, and I don't know, look, Martinez and Fletcher, uh, they're solid players. They're not going to be high draft picks, but they are going to be, they look like NFL backs. Uh, even Lyle young kid, true freshman looks like, uh, we'll keep keeping an eye on him soon. Uh, but what I really like about the running back room is that each of these guys are just very physical. I love the the fact that they can combine the passing game, the downfield passing game, and the ability to run the football in a power sense like they did, especially last week. I mean, you know, everybody who got a chance to run that football looked like the look at they 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 were making sure, hey, if you're gonna be physical, you're gonna knock that guy down, I'm gonna do the same thing. Yeah, I mean, this team's built from the inside out. I mean, Mario Cristobal, when he came to Miami, he was building the offensive line from day one. And uh, now it's, it, it, you know, these guys have, have started developing in, in a pretty good way. They were a decent offensive line last year. They're a decent offensive line uh, this year. They got Jalen Rivers back, who absolutely is going to factor into your draft picture yep. uh, without a doubt. And uh, he's been hurt for, for a few weeks, but they got him back this week, and he was unbelievable against Louisville, I thought. You know, he there were a few of those run plays where he pulled from his left tackle position all the way across the line and was mauling people and uh, just showed phenomenal ability to move and run and 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 power block. And uh, I think Jalen Rivers is starting to make himself a lot of money uh, after that performance because uh, the NFL will definitely take note of the things he did in that game. Um, but this team's built from the inside out, Greg, and. Um, you know, they are now developing the run game to the level that the passing game has been. Yep. And and you're going to need to be able to do that when you play the better teams in December. You know, you're not going to go to Clem play a Clemson team and be one dimensional or, you know, you're not going to go play Georgia or Texas or Ohio State or any or Oregon or any of those teams and be one dimensional. Uh, so Miami is progressing at a good place here. I don't think they've come close to peaking yet as a football team. And it's going to be very interesting to, to watch that continued progress here in the month of November. Yeah. Talk about, uh, uh, again, we know that because of their uh, seniority, uh, Martinez and Fletcher, you know, they're, they're the more experienced uh, uh, of the room, but um, it, you know, it seems to me that they, that Chris Ball kind of looks at both Fletcher and Martinez as kind of interchangeable. That they are, they absolutely are. They're they're almost the same guy. They're absolutely yeah. interchangeable. I mean, uh, Fletcher's played at an extremely high level this year. Martinez, um, not to the same degree, but I always I was saying all along that that's opportunity. You know, they, they weren't getting the holes. They really missed uh, Jalen Rivers. They could do so much more in the run game with Jalen Rivers in the lineup and. Uh, you know, this past game, they both had opportunities. They both were getting holes and they seized the moment. They both had big gains. And uh, the thing I also like is the way they're nursing them through the season to try to keep them healthy. Neither one is being asked to take on uh, too heavy of a load. They're getting about 12 carries a game each. And um, again, they're not getting too banged up in these games. It's a very physical position, especially the way Miami runs the ball. And um if they can continue using them like this and keeping them healthy, that's another thing that's going to bode well in the postseason. 
Yeah, I got to remind the viewers out there that uh, Cristobal, you know, he made his chops uh, on the offensive line. At Alabama, yes. Yep, so it's no surprise that that's exactly what he's trying to do here. Uh, And that that receiving room is just, uh, wow, it's as deep as any room in the country. Restrepo just continues. I mean, I don't think there's a a college – there's no college receivers that have better hands than Restrepo. And it may be equal, maybe, but nobody's got better hands than Restrepo. I mean, the kid is just amazing. Obviously, the size, that's one factor, but he's going to have a tremendous career at the next level no matter what. Uh, He's a big part of this offense. You throw in uh, Brown, the transfer, George, uh, and then Isaiah Horton's all of a sudden coming on, the sophomore with touchdowns in four straight games. Talk about his upside. Oh, very much so. Yeah, he's uh, really developing extremely well, and and, uh, he gives them a fourth guy, which is critical. I mean, you can rotate a little bit, keep those guys fresh. Um, Restrepo is a very unique cat, you know, Right now, I would say he's probably likely to be about a fourth round pick uh, because of his size. And, and sure. you know, he'll be hard pressed to hit four or five when they time in, in you know, for the for the draft. But someone's going to take a shot with him because um, he works harder than any player I've ever seen, uh, has as good an attitude as any player you will ever find. Uh, and is a guy that I think is going to excel on special teams at the NFL level. And uh, that's going to help him a little bit. And um, just from a character standpoint, he's as good as it gets. So if he can run in the four fives, uh, that will help him a lot in April. All right. And and we can't move on with uh, to defense without talk. Because I asked you uh, in the beginning of the season to give me a breakout player on either side of the ball. And you're hitting home runs with both of your breakout players. We're going to start on offense with Elijah Arroyo at tight end. Man, he's not. I wouldn't even call him a break. <laughs> yet. They're not giving him a chance to break out. He they, like there's only so many footballs to go around. Yeah. Um, but but uh, Elijah Arroyo is doing very well as a true freshman and can do so much more here in the second half of the season. Uh, a freakish athlete. He's he's thick as can be. He's built like an offensive guard almost. Um, but he's as nimble as a running back and uh, can do a, a lot for this Miami offense in the second half. Yeah, I mean, the guy, he's a tight end averaging over 20 yards a catch. So uh, that, yeah. that's unique. That's right. And I'm sorry, I was just talking about Elijah Lofton. That's my bad. But Arroyo, uh, yes, I, I did say he was going to be a breakout player. And um, he uh, also is just, you know, limited in how many touches he's getting yeah. in games. Like the, all these kids at tight end from Miami, the the two Elijahs, uh, Lofton and Arroyo, since I screwed up and talked about Lofton first. But, um, you know, all those players that tied in from Miami are just getting limited touches per game because there's so many other guys at the running back and wide receiver position that got to get the ball. Um, but they are capable of busting out at any moment in any game. And um, I think they're going to need them at some point. All right. Now, let's talk defense. Good news. And and not a surprise, and that's up front because the defensive front, uh, that's where the, the you know that's where the canes are the strongest. Uh, you got um, Francis, and 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 really you get the uh, addition of Mesador back, which is important. And let's start with him. Limited to three games last year, had a you know a good season a few years ago back in 2022. The top lineman, I believe, back then. Um, how's he coming along this year? He's coming along okay. I mean, he's not impacting the games the way I thought he would, but a lot of that is uh, that he, you know, he's getting back into it after missing so much time, and he's being asked to play a lot of defensive tackle and probably isn't quite yet built for that. Uh, okay. So he's taking one for the team here this year. I don't know what they'll end up doing with him next year. I My guess is next year they'll move him back outside to end. That would be the, you know, in his best interests. Uh, but uh, you know, he, he's doing okay, but again, he's another one the second half of the year should be able to do a lot more. And then uh, you take a look at the guys on the edge. Actually, you know what? Ooh. One more guy inside, uh, Barrow Jr. He seems to be really coming on this year. He's playing great. He really is. Um, uh, he's been a big, a little bit of a surprise, actually, in how consistent he's been this year. Uh, probably is as impactful as anybody on the on the line. Um, his big thing is that he's, he's a little bit on the smaller side, uh, which I don't know how that's going to impact him with the NFL. Um, but as a college defensive tackle, 
in this defense where they like to move. He's doing a great job. Um, and then the other guy we should talk about is Ruben Bain, who oh, yeah. missed, you know, almost really the first half of the season. And, you know, he's slowly getting back into it. Like his first game was very average. Last week he was a little bit better, but I don't think he's playing anywhere near the level yet that he will get to as the season goes on. Um, and uh, I think because of that, uh, the Miami defense also has a lot of upside. I don't think we've seen the best of that yeah. unit. Just imagine how much better that uh, defensive pressure is going to be, and they're going to need yeah, it. And, and and the linebacker, Francisco Manoa, has been kind of average the last few weeks. So he could play a lot better than he's playing as well. Uh, before we move on, your breakout player on defense, again, you hit another home run here with Tyler Barron. Well, I'm going to temper that one a little bit for you, Greg. He started out the double? year making me. He's, well, yeah, let's call it a double because, you know, he started out the year making me look like a genius. I mean, played very well in Gainesville uh, and then was dominant against Florida A&M. But since then, I've been disappointed in Tyler Barron. He's kind of disappeared a little bit. He needs to pick it up. If he wants to get drafted, um, he needs to – he really does need to pick it up. He's played the last few weeks like he already put what he needed to on film. And uh, he has not put what he needs to on film. I mean, uh, he's capable of playing much better than what he's been playing. I don't know what the holdup has been. Uh, but Miami needs him to step it up and play better here down the stretch. You mentioned Manoa. So we know that we, we know how talented he is, but maybe he does have to play better. We get that. But are there any other linebackers that – could make an impact. Wesley was Saints having a decent season. Uh, kind of, to me, been a little hit or miss lately, but uh, he started out like gangbusters as well, and, and he's having uh, a decent season. Uh, the transfer, Jalen Alderman, has some moments uh, here or there. And then uh, the sophomore, uh, Raul Aguirre, is a guy that they've been starting to give more playing time to here the last few weeks. Uh, he's been doing pretty well. And then we go to the secondary, and as you said, uh, kind of alluded to before, I mean, this is where uh, there was the biggest concern on defense, losing three key players from last year's team. And overall, look, pass defense actually statistically is middle of the pack. It is the run defense statistically that has been doing a better job. Maybe not that big of a surprise, especially in high-scoring games, but overall, the pass defense got to be better, right? There's no doubt. I mean, these guys are just a little slow, Greg. Uh, you know, uh, Mish Powell is, is a decent safety, but if they are playing a team that's got speed, uh, they have problems. And uh, their their issues against Cal were more mental, just busted coverages. Uh, against Louisville, they were flat out run. And, uh, you know, you can't hear – you're only as fast as what you are, you know. But I, I think that their deficiencies – uh, do kind of limit them in terms of what they can do defensively. And that's a bit of a problem when you play decent teams. Yeah. And I take a look at the ske schedule and uh, really there's only one team that would probably be an issue there. And that would actually be the last game of the season. Because the Orangemen have a uh, you know a trio of good receivers, including their own tight end slash receiver Gadsden. Uh, you know, of course, the Aranda Gadsden. Everybody yep. in Miami knows him. Yeah. So uh, anyway, but yeah, I think that's a, and it's a favorable schedule uh, no matter what. Uh, but that to me, especially if it's the last game, if it means getting to the championship game, that could be some pressure there and going up against those receivers. But other than that. Uh, the schedule is pretty nice starting this week, even though, look, we saw what happened with Cal. Virginia Tech is definitely proving that they're actually a little bit better than we – we thought the Hokies were going to have a good year this year, and they got off to a slow start. But they're, they're now playing as well as we thought they were going to be. But Duke is surprising everybody with your boy Manny Diaz, uh, the head coach. That's going to be a nice story. Georgia Tech is dangerous on the road with Haynes King if he's healthy. And in that Syracuse game with McCord could be dangerous. So even though there are dangerous games, it's not like they're playing any of the top teams remaining in the, in the ACC. Unless, of course, you look at the standings and you consider Duke a top team. So uh, what do you think about the rest of that schedule? And uh, what do you think about – I'm sure there's going to be a nice little uh, story with Manny Diaz coming back to Miami in a couple of weeks. 
Yeah, I think you sized it up perfectly. Uh, you know, I don't expect both. I don't. I, I I forget if Clemson and SMU play each other, but I'm not expecting both of those teams to finish the year uh, undefeated. Uh, I'll take a quick look while we're talking here, but but uh, no, they don't. You know, I don't. I don't see both of those teams getting through uh, their their schedules unbeaten. Um, you know, SMU does not play Clemson. Uh, boy, SMU really does not have a very difficult no. uh, schedule at all uh, here they, down the stretch. So I don't, they, they're at Duke Pitt, uh, Pitt, well, Pitt will give them a hard time, yeah. uh, but, but it's a home game. Um, Boston college, you know, maybe at Virginia, Virginia. you never know a Virginia on the that. road. And then the Cal game. I mean, I'll, I'll go out on the limb and I'll say one of these teams at least is, is going to beat SMU. Um, so, you know, if Miami just keeps taking care of business, they're going to be there in the in the in the ACC championship game uh, at the at the end of the year. I mean, you know, Clemson still has to play Louisville, uh, which and Virginia could, Tech on the road, and Virginia Tech on the road, and Pitt on the road. Yeah. So you know, those are three weeks where you know they could have some challenges. So we'll see. You know, we'll see how this plays out. But I'm expecting Miami to make it through. And uh, and get there, Greg, and then we'll see what happens in Charlotte. Yeah, how's the uh, what, what's the reaction down there in Miami? Uh, yeah, how are the fans taking it? Are they, oh, uh, they're not, they, they 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 they're not happy at all. Like they're they they they, they always find things that you know they want everything to be perfect, and that's part of being a Miami fan. And uh, you know they're a little starved down here. But uh, look, I mean, this has been a very enjoyable season so far. You got Florida State coming up this weekend. Uh, that's always a fun time. It's a night game at home at Hard Rock Stadium. I'm expecting that to be a, a pretty raucous environment there. And I'm um, expecting Miami to, to play pretty well against Florida State. And uh, so I, I think by the end of the weekend, maybe we'll get some smiles out of some people. <laughs> but well, actually, I kind of feel that's the way as well because Florida State, uh, has, as we know, they've beaten Miami the last three years. And the last trip to Miami was the 45-3 blowout. So you know Miami is uh salivating. Yes, yep. they owe them one. They owe them one. Oh yeah. And and the roles are kind of reversed, you know. I mean yeah. FSU this year is kind of where Miami was those two two years ago. So I don't know how that happened after they went 12 and 0 last year. <laughs> Somebody's not doing a very good job of roster management up there, I'll tell you that. But like uh Man, what a drop off! Have you ever yeah. seen like this? The team go from twelve and zero to what are they one and six now? Crazy. I tell you what, though, Gary. In a way, I think this is the new college football, especially when you're dealing with all these teams. It's it's free agency in college football, and it's just I, I just I'm sorry, I just don't see a dominant team anymore. I, I just think anything can happen. Any of these teams can win. It all depends on you know that game that week. I think there's a lot of teams that can win the national championship this year. And, and I think that's great for college football. So there's no doubt the, the playoffs are going to be phenomenal. I think. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of really, really, really entertaining, good games. Um, so, yeah, I agree. I think, it, I think it's great the way that this has played out for college football. Yeah. And uh, it's going to, like you said, it's going to be an awesome playoff uh, first ever real playoff in college football for FBS. So we're uh, all definitely excited and interested, but there's still a little bit ways to go. Uh, we look forward to talking to you uh, definitely uh, by playoff time. If all goes well for the hurricanes and they're in the playoffs and uh, we'll talk about uh, maybe their matchup whenever that uh, time comes, or of course, ACC championship game first, but we'll see if they can get there. Fingers crossed for Miami hurricane fans. And I want to remind everybody again, to go to canesport.com. Uh, and uh, tell us just a little bit about what they find on Kane Sport, Gary. Oh, man, if you want to follow Miami, uh, canesport.com is the place to be. Um, you know, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, we provide you with uh, every piece of knowledge, every piece of coverage that you could possibly need to enhance uh, your fan experience and be extremely knowledgeable about the hurricanes. We have a great community of fans that you can interact with on the message boards. Uh, highly encourage you to come check us out. Uh, if you are even a, a borderline Miami fan. 
And we're going to, uh, of course, we'll have a link in the description so you can check that out and uh, become a new subscriber if you haven't already subscribed to Kane Sport. Uh, Gary, appreciate it. Thanks for your time as always. And again, uh, if everything goes well, hopefully we'll talk to you again uh, in the next uh, five or six weeks. You got it, Greg. Anytime.